Yeehaw, I got Snickers. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier, and welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's, an indie horror game that you guys suggested en masse, and I saw that Yami Mass played it, and he said it was... <laughs> Today we're building Freddy Fazbear from Five Nights at Freddy's, a pretty popular game about killer animatronics. When I first heard the news about a possible movie being made, I figured it'd be fun to try to build this titular bear. Our goals for this build are pretty simple. First, we need to be a sneaky boy, able to sneak around our pizzeria with deadly efficiency. Second, we need to have a heavy damage dealing attack worthy of our sneak attacks on our poor and lowly security guard worker. Lastly, Five Nights at Freddy's or Fright Night at Freddy's. We need to be scary. Scary enough to build ourselves an entire franchise. For Ancestor, we're going to go with Automaton because while you're a mechanical bear, you're more mechanical than bear. For our ability boost, you get strength and one free one. I would put in the charisma because you are the face of a big, huge, loving corporation. You know, quotations on loving. And for wisdom and intelligence, we're going to take flaws in those so we can boost our dexterity because you're nimble and fast. Wisdom and intelligence are going to take the hit because I feel like you just don't need it. I feel like trying to shove a person, a living, breathing person, into a soup because you think they're an exoskeleton doesn't mean you're the smartest one in the bunch. You got a speed of 25 feet, you get 8 hit points, you can be a size medium or small, we're gonna go with medium because that's how big Freddy is. For languages, you know common and utopian. You get low light vision, you can see in dim light as though it's bright light, which makes sense because you can see in the dark. Automaton core, your body contains this core that houses your soul, this life energy that flows through your body, much like blood and humanoids. As a result, you're technically a living creature, you don't have the typical construct immunities, and you can be affected by effects that target living creatures, and you can cover hit points normally with positive energy, like with healing spells. Additionally, when you're reduced to zero hit points, you instead get knocked out and you begin dying like a normal humanoid. Makes sense. Constructed body, this is where the automaton part comes in. You don't need to eat or drink, you don't need to sleep, but you do need to have a daily period of rest of about two hours. It's kind of like sleeping, but you're aware of your surroundings. And if you don't, you become fatigued until you recover by entering those two hours of sleep. For our first level ancestry feat, you're going to be provided a body part that's designed for combat and you're going to gain either a claw or a pincer on armed attack. This pincer, which we're going to pick, deals 1d6 piercing damage, is in the brawling group, and has a grappling arm traits. Sounds like a pretty good replacement for that bite of yours, at least it does to me. For heritage, go hunter, automaton, if you have two hands free, you can increase your speed up to 30 feet, so you can run on all fours, making you a little bit faster. You're a robot made to entertain children, so I think the entertainer background is perfect for Freddy. You get two ability boosts, put them in the charisma and strength, your trained performance skill, and your trained to theater lore skill and you gain the fascinating performance skill feat. When you use this skill feat, when you perform, you compare your result to the will DC of one observer. If you succeed, the target is fascinated by you for one round. If it's a situation that requires immediate attention like combat, you have to critically succeed to fascinate it. The form action gains the incapacitation trait. You can choose which creature you're trying to fascinate before you roll, meaning you can pick your target. The target becomes temporarily immune to it for one hour. If you're an expert, if you're an expert performance, you can fasten up to four observers. If you're a master, you can get up to ten. If you're a legendary, you can fasten up to any number of observers at the same time. And now we finally get to our class, and our class is going to be a rogue. For health, you get eight plus your constitution modifier. You're an expert in perception, reflex, and will saves, and you're trained in fortitude saves. For skills, you're trained in stealth. Trained in one more skill is determined by a rogue's racket. Spoiler, it's going to be intimidation. She's also trained a number of skills in addition to 7 plus your intelligence modifier, so we're just going to get 6. We already got stealth and intimidation from our racket, we get performance and theater lore from our background, so we're going to pick survival, automaton lore, occultism, diplomacy, athletics, and deception. I feel like this is a well-rounded type of skills for Freddy, also, you know, occultism is for spooky stuff. For attacks, we're trained in simple weapons, the rapier, sap, short bow, and short sword, and unarmed attacks. We're going to be using unarmed attacks mostly, so, you know, get used to that. For defenses, we're trained light armor and armor defense. For class DC, we're trained the rogue class DC. For our first level ability boost, put them in the strength, wisdom, charisma, and dexterity. That's correct. We're going to be boosting wisdom because while Freddy kind of gains sentience due to being, you know, the possessed spirit of a child, you know what I mean? He knows how to hunt. So I think that's a good way to, like, show some character development over his age, you know, as he grows into this horrible killer, I guess. That's the best way to describe it. So yeah, we're going to be boosting wisdom for the remainder of the build. Is it the most cost effective? No. But it's fun. And for rogues, you know because we've done it in the past. I don't do skills and level feats per level. Because you know that's going to take forever. Because they get a single skill increase and a feat every single level. So I'm going to do them in brackets. So here we go. I think stealth, diplomacy, performance, deception, intimidation, getting boosted you know, throughout the build is super important for Freddy. He's scary, he's stealthy, he loves to be like deceptive and perform when you know he's on stage in the mornings and then you know, a killer at night. 
trying to make sure he doesn't get seen you know, in and out scaring people to death you know these are important factors when you're building freddy feel free to pause and you know look at them a rogue's rack is going to be ruffian as a killer robot you're going in for the kill you aren't worried about padding to your guile we can boost our strength or dexterity i say strength the bite at 87 is heavy on the chompers and a lot of strength was put in that bite you can deal sneak attack damage with any simple weapon in addition to the weapons listed in the sneak attack class feature with the ones we are able to use as a rogue when you critically succeed on an attack roll using a simple weapon and the target has a flat-footed condition, you can also apply the critical specialization effect of the weapon you're wielding. You don't gain these benefits if the weapon has a damage die larger than the D8, and that's after applying any ability that alters its damage die size. You're trained in intimidation and medium armor. When you gain the light armor expertise, you also gain expert proficiency in medium armor. When you gain mastery, you also gain master proficiency in medium armor. You also gain access to sneak attack. If you strike a creature that has a flat foot condition with an agile or finesse weapon, or a simple weapon, considering we're a ruffian, a ranged weapon attack, you also deal an extra 1d6 precision damage. For ranged attack with a thrown melee weapon, the weapon also must be a finesse or agile. On a surprise attack on the first round of combat, if you roll deception or stealth for initiative, you should be rolling stealth, personally. Creatures who haven't acted yet are flat footed against you. For a rogue feat, you use tumble behind. When you successfully tumble through, the foe whose space you pass through is now flat footed against the next attack you make before the end of your turn. For a second level rogue feat, get brutal beating to just brutally beat people, or you know, bite them. Whenever your strike is a critical hit and deals damage, the target is now frightened one, making you scarier than you were before, which you already were pretty scary. At the third level, we get deny advantage. You aren't flat footed to hidden, undetected, or flanking creatures of your level or lower, or creatures of your level and lower using a sneak attack. However, they can still help their allies flank. For general feat, let's get toughness to increase our health by our level. We're definitely going to need it because we aren't going to be boosting your constitution that much. At the fourth level, we'll get Dread Striker. Any creature that has a frightening condition is also flat foot against your attacks. Combine those with brutal beating, and you'll be scaring people and biting them to no end. With sneak attack damage, too. At our fifth level, we'll get ability boost from the strength, charisma, wisdom, and dexterity. For ancestry feet, get lesser augmentation. Improve a first level or fifth level augmentation. Increase your pincer by one step, now dealing 1d8 worth of damage. Our sneak attack increases up to 2d6. We get weapon tricks. You get expert and simple weapons and armed attacks, as well as the rapier, sap, short bow, and short sword. When you critically succeed on an attack roll against a flat-footed creature while using your simple weapon, you apply the critical specialization effect of the weapon you're wielding. Not quite, you know, worth it since we already have it with through Ruffian, but that's okay. At level 6 a row, get Twist the Knife. You deal persistent bleed damage to the target equal to your number of sneak attack damage die. At 7th level, get Evasion. Your rank and reflex saves and crit the master. When you roll a success on a reflex save, you get a critical success instead. For general, if you get Die Hard, you die the dying condition of 5 instead of 4. Vigilant Senses, your rank and perception increase up to master. Weapon specialization, you deal 2 additional damage with weapons around attacks which you're an expert in. This increases up to 3 when you're a master. At rogue level 8, get tactical entry. When you rolled stealth for initiative in this encounter, and neither you or your enemies have acted in this encounter yet, you can stride up to your movement without triggering any reactions. At level 9, you get answers to feet, get arcane camouflage. You can cast blur and invisibility each once per day as a second level arcane innate spell. Blur makes you concealed for one minute, and invisibility, this is more for in-character reasons why Freddy is so dangerous on those later nights. Debilitating Strike. When you strike a creature that's flat-footed and you deal damage, you can disable them with a debilitating strike. You can apply one of the following debilitations to it that lasts until the end of your next turn. One puts a negative 10-foot penalty on all its speeds, and one makes it enfeebled one. You can pick one of the two for right now. Create Fortitude. Your rank in Fortitude saves increases up to Expert. A Rogue level 10, you get Ability Boost from the Strength, Dexterity, Charisma, and Wisdom. For a Rogue Feet, get Sneak Savant to be that much better at killing graveyard workers. When you roll a failure in a sneak action, you get a success instead. At level 11, you get a general feat, get fleet to increase our land speed by 5 for even 30. 35, you don't have a weapon. Rogue Expertise, your rank in your rogue class DC increase up to expert, and your sneak attack goes up to 3d6, dealing a little bit more extra damage to those chompers. At rogue level 12, get vicious debilitations. You can add the following debilitations to the list you can choose from and use debilitating strike. The first one, the target gains a weakness of 5 to your choice of bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, or the target becomes clumsy one. You know, after the bite of 87, things tend to get a little wonky in that head. I personally go to clumsy. At rogue level 13, for an answer to peek at Ancestral Blink, you can cast Dimension Door once per hour as a 4th level innate arcane spell. That means you can instantly transport yourself and any items you're carrying or wearing up to 120 feet within the space you can see. Improved Evasion, your rank and reflex saves increase to Legendary. When you roll a critical failure and a reflex save, you get a failure instead. When you roll a failure and a reflex save, you only get half damage. Incredible Senses, your rank and perception increase to Legendary. Light Armor Expertise, your rank and Light Armor, Medium Armor, Armor and Defense increase up to Expert. Master Tricks, your ranks goes up to Master and all simple weapons, unarmed attacks, and including the Rapier, Sap, short bow and short sword. At level 14, get spring from the shadows. You can strike to your speed, but you must end your movement next to an enemy you've hidden from or undetected by. You can then strike that enemy. You can remain hidden or undetected by that creature until you strike. So you can move into the room, 
wait until you have that nice perfect strike and then hit. Rogue level 15, get ability boost, put in the strength, charisma, wisdom, and dexterity. Double debilitation when used to debilitating strike, you can apply two debilitations as simultaneously, but you remove one, removes the other. General feet, get feather step, you can step in difficult terrain, just in case the, you know, graveyard worker leaves some pizza boxes for you to step in. Greater weapon specialization, your dimensional weapon specialization increases to four, with an armor attack soon, which you're expert in, or six if you're a master. At level 16, get a rogue feat, get instant opening. Choose a target within 30 feet, it's flat foot against your attacks until the end of your next turn. Depending on what you describe your distraction, this action can either be an auditory or visual trait. Play that little jingle right before you strike, I think that works out pretty well. At level 17, get greater augmentation to greatly augment Astral Blink. You can expend your hourly use dimension door as a free action when you begin your turn. If you do, your strides are augmented until the end of your turn, allowing you to instantly teleport to any point you can reach within your speed instead of traversing normally to the location. While augmented, your strides gain the Conjuration and Teleportation traits. Your augmented strides don't trigger reactions that can be triggered up by move actions or upon leaving or entering a square unless those reactions are triggered on teleportation. Slipper in mind, your rank and will saves increase to master, and when you roll success on a will save, get critical success instead. Sneak attack increases up to 4d6. At level 18, you get powerful sneak. When you roll a success or critically succeed on a strike using your strength modifier on the attack roll and you deal sneak attack damage, you can change the additional damage of your sneak attack to ordinary damage of the same type as your strike rather than precision damage. At level 19, get Skitter for a general feat. You can crawl up to half your speed. Light Armor Mastery, your ranks in Light Armor, Medium Armor, and Unarmored Defense increases up to Master. Master Strike, your rank in Rogue Class DC increases up to Master. You gain the Master Strike free action. When your strike hits a flat-footed creature and you'll deal damage, you can make the target attempt a fortune save against your Class DC. It becomes immune to this for one day, but on a critical success, the target doesn't do anything. On a success, they're enfeebled until the end of your next turn. Failure, they're paralyzed for four rounds. On a critical failure, they're paralyzed for four rounds, knocked unconscious for two hours, or killed. Your choice. I mean, this can be the bite of 87. Using that Master Strike on a child might seem like overkill for me, but you do you. And finally, we reach level 20. Put a Billy Boost in the Strength, Intelligence, Dexterity, and Wisdom to level our high stats and the, you know, make up for our lack of boost to Intelligence. Rogue Feet get Hidden Paragon. You come invisible for one minute, even after you use the hostile action. Not even Glitter Dust, see Invisibility, or similar effects can reveal you, though creatures can still use the Seek action to locate you as normal. When you're all done killing, you're back on stage and you're an animatronic again, ready to wreak havoc and make hell for the nice staff the following night. With all that being said, do you want to spend five nights at Freddy's? First, you're a little quirky at night, with a legendary sneak attack and intimidation to make any graveyard worker pee pee pants wet. Second, that bite of yours. That pincer bite can do some nibbles with a stride up to 2d8 plus 2d6 plus 24 for a low of 34 and a high of 88. That's if you take your time to sneak in before they're grabbing that snack. Third, you're going to be a scare machine with all kinds of abilities to make enemies who are frightened of you flat-footed so you can continue to sneak attack, your debilitating strikes making them easier to scare, and just being able to hide in plain sight at the end of the night. So let's hold a special place in the hearts of children, start with the band, and something something and hail something. And just be careful too. Uh, well if you're hearing this, then chances are you made a very poor career choice. <laughs> Sorry dude.